So now that we've um, solved, that we've fleshed out the different elements of our uh, macro model of Slack, we've got to um, solve the household problem. And that's really a crucial element of the model because, um, you know, really in this model, the households are making the only uh, behavioral decision that there is, which is a decision of how much, um, how many services to consume or equivalently, how many shops and households uh, to visit. Because of course, once you've determined the visits, given that you know the probability that a visit is successful, you also equivalently determine your consumption. So the one key behavioral decision in this model is the one taken by household of how much they want to consume. Um, so that, that's what we need to figure out. Um, so to do that, we've got to solve the household problem. So the problem of the household is to maximize its utility given its budget constraint, uh, taking as given aggregate variables. Um, so the household, as is usual um, in, uh, in macro, is going to take as given the price of services and here in our model, the market tightness and take, that's going to be an input in the household problem and using that, they're going to maximize their utility uh, subject to the budget constraint. Uh, so let's, let's solve this problem. So at a high level, um, the household maximizes utility subject to uh, budget constraint and taking as given. So here, the only um, aggregate variables that are going to influence the decision of the households are taking as given um, price of services. And here, you know, so we use a representative household construct. So we assume that, and you know, we had assumed that all households are identical. So we'll assume that all services have the same price. Um, so the price of services uh, will denote it by P but it's both in the price of an individual service, but also the aggregate price because all services are the same, and uh, the market tightness, which we've denoted by X. And of course, um, you know, the household, when they decide how many visits they are going to do to shops, you know, at some level they influence the market tightness because the market tightness is a ratio of all the visits by the productive capacity in the economy, but we assume that the, each household, we've assumed that there is a unit mass of household, but we'll assume that each household is uh, infinitely small, and so no household influences the aggregate market tightness. Uh, very much like in reality, um, if, you're, if you're a small firm, you know, uh, if you post some vacancies, you're not going to affect aggregate labor market tightness, or if you're a household, and you make some visits to shops, you're not going to affect uh, the market tightness in the economy. Um, so households are going to take as given price tightness and they'll, they'll assume that they have no influence on, on those, of course. Um, so these are very standard assumptions in the Valrasian world. Um, so in the Valrasian world, you always take prices as given and you assume that you have no influence on these prices. Here we kind of we do the same in our matching world where you take prices as given, but you also take tightness uh, as given. So there's an extra aggregate variable that you take as given. Okay, so, um, so this is at a high level what the household is going to do. And so now mathematically, uh, let's uh, solve this. So the household is going to maximize <coughs> the utility over C, consumption of services, M over P, real money balances um, subject to um, the budget constraint and the budget constraint, um, the budget constraint just imposes that um, income is equal to um, expenditure. That's because all the income that you've got 
um, you're going to either spend it on services or whatever is left, you're going to hold it as money. So income has to be equal uh, to expenditure and so which we can uh, rewrite as um, M, which is money plus one plus tau x price P plus CC. So this is total uh, expenditure on services minus mu, minus, which is the end amount of money minus P times F of X times K is equal to zero. So adjust our budget constraint. Uh, and of course, the maximization is over C services and M holding uh, of money. Oh. So here, you know, we maximize a function of two variables subject to um, this um, equality constraint. So a typical thing that we can do to simplify um, is to uh, get rid uh, of the second variable, which is real money balances, express it as a function of consumption of services so that we get an unconstrained optimization problem. Um, so this is a very convenient way to get rid of the constraint uh, when we have an equality constraint. So uh, if we rework the budget constraint, what do we get? So if I rework the budget constraint, I can, exp I can express uh, real money balances, M over P, uh, and that's just going to be equal to um, U over P uh, plus, here I divide by P, so F of X times K, minus, and here it's divided by P, 1 plus tau X times C. And so uh, you can see this is just come from the above budget constraint. Once I put everything, uh, shift everything on the right hand side, except uh, money and I divide everything by P. And so then if we then uh, include that in the utility function, then the household problem become to maximize over C, the utility over C and uh, read money balances, but which, are, which we've expressed as a function of P. So U over P plus F times K minus 1 plus tau times C over C without any constraint. So here we have an unconstrained optimization problem. Uh, so now you know, we need to uh, do this maximization. Uh, That's what we are trying to figure out. So um, before we tackle the maximization, we've got to uh, make sure, uh, like figure out what are the properties of this um, maximization problem so that we know how to tackle it. Uh, so to um, look at the properties of this maximization problem, what we can do is bring back the expression for um, the utility function that we have. So uh, we are maximizing over C uh, the sum of, we have a first term key over one plus key C epsilon minus one over epsilon, that's the utility over services, plus we have a, a second term one over one plus key, and then we have the utility over read money balances, which here we've substituted out using the budget constraint and we have mu over p plus f of k plus one plus tau times c epsilon minus one or epsilon okay so that's our maximization problem now um, all right so let's look at the first term here um, so this uh, this is a uh, because epsilon is um, strictly greater than one. Um, so this is, uh, uh, so here what we have is just a, a power function um, with an exponent that's uh, positive, uh, but less than one. So this is a function that's strictly concave in C. Okay, uh, now let's look at our second term here. 
Okay, two things, two things to note. So first of all, through the same argument we've said, so the function, uh, you know, the function uh, that at y associates y epsilon minus one over epsilon divided by one plus key. Oops. So this function here, uh, again, that's a power function with an exponent that's between zero and one. So uh, that's uh, strictly concave in, uh, you know, y, so that's, a, that's a thing. And then what we see is that the second term is actually the composition of two functions. This strictly concave uh, function and which is also increasing. And then, of course, we have a linear, uh, oops, sorry, so here we have a minus that kind of sneaked in. This is a minus, not a plus. Right. Um, and then inside of this, um, we have a linear function uh, in C. The function which at C gives mu over P plus F k minus 1 plus tau c is just linear in c. And um, since, it, since it's linear uh, in c, it means it's also concave. Because you know that any linear function is concave. It's also convex. But in particular, it's concave here. Um, so our second term here is the composition of a concave function and an increasing and concave a function, and is therefore a concave. So um, we have um, a function that strictly concave in, in y, increasing in y at the outside. Uh, in the inside, um, your function, the function is linear, so concave in C. Then overall, the second term is a composition of a concave and increasing function, the outside, and a concave function on the inside. Uh, And so the resulting function is going to be concave in C. Now, we have a, what we maximize is a sum of um, two functions. <coughs> so we are maximizing the sum of two functions. Both functions are concave in C. So once you add up two functions that are concave in C, you get a function that's concave in C as well. <coughs> 